Hello, this is Michael Tracy, and this video is going to look at the climb and fall of Swedish ski alpinist Tomas Olsson in 2006. For some reason, there's a great deal of misinformation being put out about this climb, so I thought I would do a short video and just state what the facts are and leave just a brief commentary for the end. Olsson was part of the Vikings Are Back expedition in 2006 to ski down the Norton Kolar. Their team started from Advanced Base Camp on May 14th and skipped the North Coal Camp reaching a camp at 7,900 meters in a single day of climbing. At the 7,900 meter camp, they didn't spend the night because they didn't have any sleeping bags. Instead, they headed out at 10 p.m. Chinese time, which is 8 p.m. Mount Rain Irvine time, on their summit bid. Using oxygen, they reached the summit at 10 a.m. Mount Rain Irvine time for a 14-hour climb, which is 222 vertical feet per hour and is certainly an excellent climb time for that distance. Most Climbers spend an additional night at North Cole and an additional night at a camp at about 8,200 meters. With such an exhausting climb to the summit, Olsen noted his exhaustion on the summit on a radio call and hoped he would be fit enough to ski down. He and Tormann Granheim descended on skis. This is a photo of uh, Tormann just at the top of the zigzag. They don't descend the zigzag, but traverse over and ski down the small gully into the main couloir. It looks like Olsen is seated and waiting for Tormund to lead the route across to the small gully. Once they enter the main couloir, one of Olsen's skis breaks and they attempt to repair it with duct tape. Uh, they manage to get down a little further to 8,500 meters, which is the top of the break in the rocks. They then decide to rappel down that section of the rocks with Olsen heading down first. They do not have a solid anchor point, so they use two snow sticks and an ice axe as an anchor. Olsen then attempted to uh, abseil down the rock section while still wearing his skis. At this point, Tormund reports that there was fog and he could no longer see Olsen's descent, but at some point the makeshift anchor gave way and Olsen fell. Given the fog, it is not clear exactly what happened, but Tormund thinks Olsen lost consciousness upon hitting a rock. Olsen's body was found a couple days later at the bottom of the glacier. It is unfortunate the amount of misinformation being used about this climb. The pair made an excellent ascent, only stopping in one camp for a few hours rest. I'll link to Tormund's video of the upper descent, and he was certainly skiing well on that section, and they had passed the difficult descent down the small gully into the main couloir. Unfortunately, skis are not suited for the rock section they were trying to pass. Tormund was able to downclimb the rock section and search the upper couloir for his partner, where he found his ice axe and crampons. Tormund then returned to North Cole, though his original intent was to ski all the way down the couloir. A search team found Olsen's body at the bottom of the couloir. In the Himalayan database, it is reported that his body was then helicoptered back to Kathmandu, but that would have been on the north side, so special permission would have had to been given to enter the Chinese airspace. But they were able to locate the body and uh, evacuate it. And while it is important to study the deaths on Everest in order to learn from them, I do not see the connections that some other commentators are making to Mallory and Irvin's climb. Olsen fell in fog, and no one knows exactly why he was not able to arrest his falls with the skis. No one saw exactly what happened as his partner reported too much fog to see even from a short distance. The only thing we can be certain is that when you die on Everest, there is no shortage of internet vultures that will pick away at your carcass for years to come.